Hello and welcome to Ula Tea Leaf Readings. My name is Lenore and today I'm going to be reading your tea leaves. This is a horoscope for Sagittarius. If Sagittarius is your solar, lunar, ascendant slash rising sign, then this is a message for you. All right, let's get started. And so this is a bonus reading for Sagittarius. And our card tonight is the Six of Wands, which has everything to do with victory. Okay, let's go ahead and take a look and see what these tea leaves have to say. And so if you have not subscribed yet, please think about doing that. You can hit that little bell. It'll let you know when the next readings are coming out. It is free to subscribe. Okay, so immediately I'm seeing we have a person right here. You can see the head, the body, and a mountain, kind of gazing off towards that mountain. And I feel like this is a real indicator of your movement towards your next big goal right? That next mountain to climb, that holy, holy mountain. <laughs> One of the most sacred symbols that there are, right? Uh, a real indicator of a desire for ascension, uh, enlightenment, for understanding, maybe even solitude, right? Willing to undertake uncomfortable circumstances uh, so that you can, you know, kind of gather yourself up and uh, begin to grow. Oftentimes it is the ordeals of our life that are actually the things that really are quite transformative. Um, now, sometimes these things happen, they're out of our control, we have no choice we just kind of have to go through them and then there are other times when yeah we make kind of a very intentional choice i'm gonna do this thing right i'm gonna go through the difficulties that i must to help refine my abilities to help uh expand my experience and perceptions of the world and so I feel like there really is this sense of wanting to grow as a person, as a being, as a spiritual being, okay? So that is a most lovely sight to see, something wonderful to start out with. And I'm going to go ahead and we're going to look at this. It looks like it says a nose, N-O-S, and I'm going to take this as a partial E over here. So nose, something to do with the nose. Now, maybe you are somebody who suffers from uh, allergies or um, you have something going on with your nose, uh, some sinuses, right? The sinuses, um, your breathing, possibly, uh, something maybe to give attention to, right? If you're like me, sometimes I, I put it off. I think, oh, it'll get better. And then I end up getting sick. If you have watched the readings, you know, for any amount of time, you know, we do. We end up kind of <laughs> having a lot of respiratory stuff because our daughter is young and in school. And yeah, we just, we get exposed to a lot of different kinds of fluids and things. Um, but you know, sometimes it's just like, I, it'll pass it as a cold. We're just, you know, we'll just take a little few extra vitamins. Um, well, yeah, sometimes it, that that's fine, but, um, maybe in this case, because it's coming up, I'm not saying that there's anything really wrong here. Of course I am not, um, you know, I'm not medically inclined. I'm not licensed. I'm just some lady on the internet, right? Um, but yeah, it comes up. So I say, if it's something that has been bothering you or you've been thinking about, maybe go get it checked out. Okay. Um, now let's continue. 
Okay, we so we have two people talking. Um, and I do, I almost feel immediately there is a sense of gossip happening. Um, kind of standing around in the supermarket. <laughs> Hopefully not in the middle of the aisle, right? Um, in the supermarket, kind of talking, chatting, catching up. Um, kind of a, a little reprieve from all of that uh, well-mannered um, disposition you Sagittarius people usually have. We all have that one or two friends in our life that we like to gossip with, don't we? Um, I'm usually somebody who says, try not to talk about other people, right? Um, especially, you know, if, it's, if you're being risky or wild with it, talking to people who you know are going to pass on what you've said, just don't do it. Also, if you can get away with it, just not partaking in the chit chat like that, um, it's better for your overall being, I think. Um, now, do I gossip? Yeah, I absolutely do. My husband and I are pretty chatty. <laughs> Um, and I, <laughs> and I try my best, um, not to, you know, not to do too much of that, but you know, what can you do once in a while <laughs> things come up? So I do feel like this is kind of a meeting of, um, you know, with somebody who you feel comfortable kind of just, uh, gabbing with, as they say, uh, having, you know, maybe some inconsequential, uh, you know, it's not small talk. It's nothing super profound, but yeah, kind of idle chit chat. Um, you know, I, as I say, let's usually strive for the higher, the higher ground, higher road. Right. Um, but sometimes listen, we're human beings. Okay. <laughs> it happens. Um, so yes, kind of having a little fun with that. I think a little bit of a different, um, you know, a different kind of communication for you. Um, this might be somebody who's an old friend, somebody who's known you for a long time, might be a family member, whoever it is, right? I just feel like there is um, kind of this little bit of giddiness here, um, a little bit of just feeling good about having a conversation that is outside of the normal conversations that you're having. Okay. Um, now let's see. I can't help but look at these two faces up here. Now this one looks kind of like a bird. It almost looks like a front view of a seagull. Have you ever seen pictures of birds? They're so majestic. Well, I, yes, you probably have seen a picture of a bird sometimes, <laughs> sometimes somewhere, right? Um, but these pictures of birds where there's, it's just straight forward, right? Like the front of their face with their beak pointed towards you. They look so silly. The funniest ones I've seen are, uh, American Eagle, bald eagles, right? Um, they're so majestic. They're huge, right? I saw one a few weeks ago. It was eating, um, some roadkill or something, um, uh, while I was driving home and I couldn't, I, every time I get close to one, um, I'm just astounded at how big they are. They're huge. Uh, but they are so majestic, so beautiful. And then you look up pictures of their face straight on, um, which yeah, definitely go do it. Very silly, very silly looking. So I'm looking at this one. It reminds me of a seagull, right? It looks like it might even be winking at you. Um, and then up here we have a fox. Okay. So we have this kind of ragtag looking little <laughs> group, little partnership here. Um, and I do feel, I don't feel like this is you. Okay. And I'm just going to say that <laughs> I don't think that this is, um, and it, it doesn't indicate anything about you or, uh, your attributes. There is a little fly in here. Sorry. Um, so I, I'm feeling like this is almost kind of I don't know, maybe somebody at work, 
right? Just kind of um, a, gr a little, a little uh, partnership, friendship of two people. They seem kind of tricky, okay? These are people, we have that fox, yeah. The fox is really cute, right? Very cute, but very, very naughty fox. Um, always doing things they shouldn't be doing. Um, so I'm looking at this and I'm thinking, yeah, you got to kind of just keep an eye out. You know it. You already know who I'm talking about, probably. As I'm saying this, you're thinking, oh, yes, this is definitely. Now, if it's not at work, maybe it's the neighbors. Okay. Um, maybe it is uh, somebody in a social group that you are part of. Maybe they're even family members. Uh, but I do think that, yeah, there's just kind of this like sense of, I don't know, prying, I think, you know, just kind of getting involved where they should not be getting involved. Um, and I think actively, really, I don't think this is just like they're over here gossiping like some people I know. <laughs> um, no, I think that this is like really trying to go out of their way to make some trouble. Now, I don't know that it's that they're very nefarious people, um, but I think more like immature, right? Just making things difficult for others. Now, it might be that you are in a management position or, yeah, you're just somebody who has been there for a while, right? You are one of the elders of your work and these people seem to be quite young or at least they come off as being quite young. And, uh, and so, yes, I would just really be wary. Be careful of how you talk to them, what you say to them, how close you let them into your lives and all of that kind of thing. Um, these are people that are not careful with other people's secrets, with information, um, you know, and, and also like really framing things to seem unlike they really are, right? Omitting parts of what the scenario and so on. So I would just watch yourself with these. Um, every workplace has them um, to some degree. If you don't, then you're lucky. Okay. <laughs> if you don't, you're lucky. All right. So here's the most important one that I saw. We have the sacred heart. So all of this kind of mundane stuff going on um, yeah, part of the tedium of the, the day, right? Just kind of, um, you know, an aspect of the things that go on while you're going through kind of the motions of, of, um, your living. Now in the most sacred parts of your life, we have a crown, we have the, um, we have the sacred heart. Okay. The sacred heart, if you can't think of what that is, um, it is a heart that usually is like on fire, right? Um, or kind of ornately decorated. This is the, uh, an, an expression of one's love for God or Jesus or both the Trinity. Um, this is usually kind of a Catholic image. Um, but you do see it used other places, right? And, um, and so for me, it always represents a sense of extreme passion and agape. Now agape is the love that we share with the divine, the love that we have with God. Now, um, if you know my readings at all, you know, I'm very interested in, um, divine love in general. Uh, I'm a huge devotee of, uh, Teresa of Avila, and um, there are many other, many other uh, religious and uh, spiritual practitioners that um, love is the religion, right? This this form of ecstatic love, tantric love, um, the Sufis, the Jainists, the um, well, the saints, Catholics, Orthodox. Um, even you see in Coptic traditions, uh, and 
Um, one of my favorites are within like low magic, fetish magic, these, um, you know, great, uh, movements of active dance and, and appreciation connection with, uh, divine intelligences. Okay. And so when I look at this, I see it's like you've had some kind of real breakthrough at some point in your life where it's not just this concept of, of, uh, yes, the divine is there. Yes. The divine is in my life and I appreciate it. And we have this kind of mutual respect and, you know, I, I do the, the things that feel meaningful to me. And all of this is wonderful. There's nothing to say there's anything wrong with this. But then there are times where we break through. Um, you know, we, we go into these rooms of, you know, just absolute. Um, how can I explain? I mean, it is the belovedness of um, our faith, of our grace, of our, um, our kinship not only to other people, but to the divine. And so I feel that you are somebody who lives in a place of great spiritual devotion, right? Now, it doesn't have to be a religion. It doesn't have to be a particular deity or, um, or anything like that. Uh, it can be that you just know. You know the cosmos is alive. You know that you are related to it. You know that you are of it. And you live in such a way um, that you honor your life. You honor um, the world that you belong to, the world that belongs to you. Okay, there's no right or wrong way of doing this. As I always like to quote, uh, and I don't know who said it, <laughs> um, I always forget, but yeah, it's something like there are, are, there are as many ways to God or the divine as there are souls on earth or within the universe, right? As many um, intelligences and beings as there are in this cosmos, this vast, infinite thing. So there are paths to the divine, right? And that is individual to each of us, no right or wrong way. Absolutely. Um, and so I do, I, I know that you are a person who is deeply in your spiritual work and that shows itself in every movement that you make. And so I feel with this crown here, yeah, there is a real sense of, um, coming into, uh, not, it's not pridefulness, um, uh, confidence in knowing wisdom when we find things that are profoundly meaningful to us in our lives, when, when our life begins to fill up with things that um, it's not just this kind of very three-dimensional, um, you know, whatever, these things that we collect, these parts of our identity, um, our interests, our you know, how we spend our, our moments. Um, all of that is well and good and it's important, but if there's not something that is dynamic and meaningful and beloved to us, um, you know, I don't know what life is really. What, what does it, um, how does it feel quite empty at times? And so, um, you know, when we do, we find our calling, we find, um, maybe the career path that, um, we really can put ourselves into our creative abilities, the things that, um, get us into those kind of meditative flow states, uh, love, of course, love, our connectedness to our communities, our families, um, you know, of origin or chosen, Right. Uh, and, and to me, supremely above all other things, right. The love of the beloved and the beloveds within our life, our children, our, um, our spouses, our, our family members who we are very close to and so on. Uh, and then God, right. Or goddess or 
or the divine, whatever, again, and I can't stress enough, it doesn't matter how you experience that. It is, it is fully um, individual to you, right? So what makes sense to me, who I perceive to be my gods and goddesses, if you don't relate to that, that's okay. That's fine, right? And what, what you have going on, I don't have to understand it. And that's the beauty of our own personal beliefs. And so, um, you know, when we get to a point where this is really something that is truly in our life, not just like a, a concept or a, um, an abstract thing um, that we are trying to adhere to, uh, yeah, we get into this place of the emperor, the empress. Finding our power, uh, you know, knowing ourselves in a way that maybe we had not before. Um, and so, yeah, I do. I feel like this is a time in your life, Sagittarius, where there is an interesting balance, right? I feel this is the thing for me. I feel like a lot of people who get into these spiritual paths or they're going through kind of you know, moments in their life, they're going through a phase or they're dis learning, they're becoming initiated in some way. Um, there's this fracture that happens and it happens where it's like, I reject all of lower life. I don't gossip. I don't have, um, you know, I won't have any friends unless they're part of the things that I believe in or um, I have to, you know, abandon the life that I've been living or whatever and yeah okay that's fine if that's how you perceive things if that's what works for you if that's what helps you get focused on the goals that you have right and if those are spiritual goals especially um but for the long haul of life right which you know Life is not just a tiny blip, at least when we're experiencing it, right? Um, I think that we come to an understanding that, yeah, we can do both. We can be in our lower selves and also doing the higher work. Um, you know, I like when I met my husband, he is... Um, Shout out to Dove and Serpent Tarot, uh, my husband, Paul Over, the most wonderful tarot reader. Um, he's a pretty serious person most of the time, I would say. Um, you know, he's very loving and warm, and you can tell that in his readings. Now, is he exactly like he's in his readings, or am I exactly like I am in my readings? Not always, no. No, we're, you know, regular people. Um, but he could not understand the like garbage TV that I like to watch sometimes, the things that, um, the kind of humor I like and whatever. He's pretty, you know, he, he, when we met anyways, he it was pretty much very much about his spiritual work and his career and all of this. And, um, and that was different to me and wonderful and whatever but as we have bonded our lives over these many years it seems like now <laughs> um you know i think we both have come to this understanding yeah sometimes we work we do the spiritual work we um do readings and we are part of our um chosen communities and and we partake in ritual and you know we have a very kind of um you know uh magical life i would say um, but then sometimes, yeah, it's eight, it's seven, eight o'clock at night. And, um, I want to watch, you know, some kind of reality TV and, and, and you, he has come along on that journey and I, he's come along on the journey with me, but also sees that like, yeah, sometimes we got to balance things out with garbage and it doesn't, maybe it doesn't make sense to some people. Um, and that's okay. But, uh, I, when I see that in other practitioners, which I do often, um, I'm like, okay, yeah, we get it, right? So it doesn't always have to be, um, you know, you're always focused in this, in this um, belovedness, right? 
Now, is it ideal? Maybe, yeah, to live a life that is very, um, you know, this is all that you're thinking about all the time. That would be, I think, amazing probably. But, um, you know, for the purposes of us who are living ordinary and modern lives, yeah, sometimes we indulge. And so I look at this and I think, no, this is not a schism. You may be having times where you have trouble with people at work and you like to maybe gossip with your oldest friend once in a while, you know, have a little laugh and catch up about people you haven't seen in 20 years, you know, what you've heard about them and, and whatever. Um, that is not in conflict with the spiritual work that you're doing and this confidence that you are gaining through your um, experience in the magic, in the esoteric, in the divine. We shouldn't feel shameful about what we are, lower, higher, whatever. They all flow into one another. And so I think, you know, I look at it and I think, okay, this is a pretty balanced person. Not only that, an authentic being. You're not just putting on, a, you know, a costume <laughs> and um, being a spiritual person. No, you are what you are what you are. And that's a wonderful thing. That is a blessing, not only for yourself, but for the people around you, for the community that you have around you especially if you are involved in a spiritual community, for that to be kind of a, a, like a role model, for you to be kind of a role model in that way, that I am a dynamic being. I am many things. And I'm not afraid to be that. That is powerful. That is very powerful because it makes you relatable. It makes you relatable and to people who are finding their way, especially in those initial steps, that's profoundly important. I myself have had, you know, I've been involved in the esoteric communities, magic, the occult for uh, t over 20 years now. Um, when I first started, I was a young woman in my teens, later tween, teens, middle teens, later teens, into my early 20s. And I found it very difficult to relate to a lot of teachers, um, you know, books I was reading, um, because systems, uh, social systems of magic, uh, institutes and, and temples and whatever, right? Because there was really often this projection of we're very serious about what we do. We are infallible. We are all about this. Don't make a mockery of it. Don't be silly. Um, whatever. I found chaos magic and synchro mysticism around this time and those were my people because they are, they're silly. They don't take themselves too seriously. They do the work and it's profound work and it's very, you know, spread out in composite work. Um, but there was a realness to it an accessibility. And I think it's so amazing when you meet people who are like that, they're down to earth. They're amazing magicians and um, witches and, and uh, you know, whatever. Whatever alchemists and, and geniuses and thinkers and creatives and whatever. But they're down to earth and they're accessible. It makes you feel like, yeah, I could also find my own path. There's, it's not so stuffy and buttoned up as I perceive or most of us perceive it to be. And so I look at, and it, it makes sense to me as, a, as you being a Sagittarius, because you all are kind of the salt of the earth in a lot of ways. And so I appreciate that. I love seeing this. And um, 
And this is how, you know, we help one another come to uh, their own understandings. It is. It's, it's not about um, going out and recruiting people. No. It's about living by example. Giving people the hope and interest. I mean, the interest, right? I don't know. Maybe that's just me. <laughs> I just, I, lo I love to see that kind of practitioner show up once in a while. Um, okay, so we also have, it looks like, we have a person in prayer. We have two people, it looks like they're in prayer. Um, now we have an A name up here. So I feel like probably there's somebody in your life that maybe is struggling a little bit. Now we have a heart. So I wonder if it's that their relationship, um, maybe is having some issues, right? Maybe this is a divorce or, um, they're going through something that is, um, not easy. So I feel there is a real draw for you to be there for them. Also, yeah, I feel like you have been in prayer for them. If it's formal or if it's kind of this passive, I hope that, you know, they, everything kind of comes together and does well. Um, now I, and there's just, a, there's another A there. So it's somebody with something with an A name. Mm. So we also have a person here. We have a squirrel. So there is this kind of saving, saving. We also have two moons. Tomorrow is the full moon. Today is the solstice as I'm reading this. So happy solstice, by the way. Um, and I feel there's kind of this like uh, draw towards um, like saving emotional resources, kind of almost like um, well with the moon, right? The it's this watery symbol, um, very much related to the ebb and flow of things, right? The the moon um, affects the tides, and so. Um, when I see the moon, I see that it's an emotional matter. When I see the squirrel, I know that this is like squirreling things away, collecting, saving, that kind of thing. Um, and so I, I, I feel like this is like a, a time to be recharging your spiritual, emotional um, kind of batteries. Okay, so doing something that feels good to you. Doing something that feeds your soul. Uh, while somebody is going through something devastating and we are being of assistance to them, we are being a support person, we have to also do things for ourselves to um, let off some of that energy. Trying not to internalize what's going on with other people, right? So making sure that you are maybe taking walks or you know, doing something that you like to do swimming that's what comes to mind i'm really in, it's been raining so much i just want to go swimming we've only been once this year so far this summer and um and so yeah swimming <laughs> uh you know guarding watching um reality tv maybe you're like me i i get a little bit of um, a soul healing from watching just absolute chaos, <laughs> things that I don't relate to at all, but I'm like, wow, this is really interesting. <laughs> um, so, you know, yes, make sure that you're taking care of yourself while you're taking care of other people. Okay. And so we're going to do our divine doors and I'm going to go ahead and flip through. I'm going to stop and I'm going to turn this over. It says patience, everything soon will come to light and then you will see things will be all right. Things will be all right. Of course they will. Of course they will. All right. 
Sagittarius, I want to thank you so much for spending this time with me. It's always such an honor. And if you would be so kind as to like the video, it really does help the channel. And if you have not subscribed yet, please think about doing that. You can hit that little bell. It'll let you know when the next readings are coming out. It is free to subscribe. And um, if you'd like to leave a comment, I'd love to hear from you. All right, with that, I will say thank you. I love you. We'll talk in a couple days and good night.